get back It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. And today, I'm very excited. We have Laura Fuentes. She's founder of MamaBulls.com and the food and lifestyle brand, LauraFuentes.com, where she works with big brands that hire her like Sabra Hummus, Nestle, Bob Redmill, many more. They reach over 700,000 unique visitors per month, and Mama Bulls helps parents feed their children great tasting, healthy foods. And the most important part, Laura, is without spending eternity in the kitchen or breaking the bank, and they provide weekly recipe plans, cookbooks. I love the title of this one, The Best Homemade Kids Snacks on the Planet, and there's two others. And they even partner with a done-for-you meal delivery service to make it ultra easy, and she does this all with you know while raising three kids laura thanks for joining me i'm super excited to be here jeremy yeah so since this inspired insider laura i always ask what's been the lowest point and then how you push through um because it wasn't always five figure contracts with you know big brands uh literally i've had a lot of lowest points and they've all nearly all of them involved um my cookbooks Really? Um, it's super stressful to get these recipes typed out and literally I've gotten almost physically sick, uh, deadlines, you know, um, like my lowest points of all, which is why when I tell people three and I'm good. like It's like kids, I, right? Your kids I are like your cookbooks. I know that this is my last cookbook, right, right? right? I just know that I know. Really? Okay. Um because um, I don't want to physically experience that ever again. What is it about um, it that stresses you out so much? Because people, I mean, have that cookbook. Like for you, it's a cookbook. For other people, it's something else in their business that just makes them physically sick. What do you think it is? I honestly think it's not, at the end of the day, it's not what you should be doing, mm. right? So... Um, it's great and they're beautiful and um but it's really not where my my talent really is so when i look at what i enjoy doing the most that would be producing video video production and in turn that actually you know it's really a full cycle and that brings in revenue for the company brings in new leads for momables it brings new contracts television opportunities like a lot of different things and that's because I focused on what I'm best at, yeah. but I didn't know that until I tried it, you know, so. You knew that that was not where your time should be spent. Yeah, I definitely know that cookbooks is not where my time should be spent, um, for sure. Talk about early on, though. Was there, you know, right now, like you say, it's been five, you know, five years before you see a lot of traction, or four years. Yeah. What about early on, like where you thought... I and mean, what kept you going when maybe the traffic wasn't at a million page views a month? Right, right. I mean, what were you seeing early on that you're like, it's discouraging? Oh, talk sure. about one of those discouraging early moments. Yeah. So, I mean, let's just talk about meal plan development, okay? Creating meal plans. Um, I, I should let you guys know, that since you're listening and watching, that I'm still creating the meal plans at this moment. And I, I found that super stressful and um, because I, for a period of time I had a meal plan developer in place and she really wasn't the quality. I, I think I'm out of mention but I'm slightly a perfectionist and I know exactly what my audience wants and likes and I failed at training this person mm. to meet that. And therefore the quality of my meal plans went down for about a, nine to, for about a period of a year which reduced our revenue significantly, about 50%. Really? Yes. Wow. And so the biggest mistake and that I've made is letting go something that's super crucial to the revenue of our company or letting it go to the point of like not supervising it enough, you know? Um, so right now I've been developing meal plans since last uh, February, I think, February or March. 
And that's been super, super stressful. So even early and early on, um, I, when I still, now I'm doing them now and I did them then, um, early on, they were kind of stressful, but, um, I, it was hard for me to like, man, these are really great. Why don't people buy them? But then I didn't know what I know now about marketing and cycling. I didn't have the traffic and the hardest part is just sticking to it. And I just, the thing is, is like, I knew that what I was doing made a difference. And so I hung on to that one email that came once a week from one person that said, oh, I just want to tell you that my son hasn't eaten spinach in, in like 10 years. And I made this like yeah. these kale tacos or whatever it was. And he ate, and I, I just want to thank you. Yeah. And so I hung on to the things. I still have a folder in this one, in, the, in our info email inbox, you know, that's called gratitude. And they are mm-hmm. to read, it used to be called to read when you're down. And I, every time I got one of those emails, I put them in that folder and I have emails from 2012 in there and I read yeah. them when I'm down. So that's what kept me going, knowing that what I was doing made a difference. So we should all have a to read when you're down folder? You should. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you should also have an a-hole folder and never read those. Uh, so, um, because you get, as you grow, you get those too. Especially um, when you put out recipes for double chocolate chip pancakes and you'll get... You bet. Yeah. Um, but it's very hard to put yourself out there on the internet. And I think that's... A, a, a lot of people that create web- websites and companies on the internet, they are, we're, um, and, and mo- a lot of people, a lot of bloggers, a lot of content creators are introverts. And so the time, the, then, then they hire a business coach and tells them, hey, you need to put yourself out there a little bit more and so people can relate to you and they're going, wait a minute. I like being behind the screen. Right, right. right. Um, and so it's kind of, it's hard to put yourself out there. And when you do, you have to expect people to not like you. Yeah, and you know yeah. what? It's totally okay if people don't like yeah, you. Yeah. So Laura, on the flip side, uh, being physically ill, from putting out books what's been the proudest one of the proudest moments um well recently one of the proudest moments i don't go on facebook too much um my personal face like you know my personal facebook page uh but my proudest moment is to be able to say that my husband quit his job mm-hmm. and uh, it was a proud moment for me but also in the same post you know because I realized that I couldn't have done this. I couldn't have given him the opportunity had he not supported us and, and provided for us sure, sure. for you know the last decade, really. Um, we've been married 13 years this fall. So nice. um, it's really not about me, but it's about what he has also done sure. to put himself in that situation. So that was really one of my proudest moments. I love that, yeah. Um, mentors, another piece of the puzzle is mentors who are influential mentors that you go to or it's a colleague to bounce things off from a business perspective that's not in your business uh i forgot to even thank justin crane for in for introducing us yes. um i love justin and i know you know justin well also so thank you justin yes yeah. he introduced us um one of my mentors uh, her name is melissa lance she is how I met Justin. Um, Justin works uh, with Melissa, and Melissa owns a company called The Fresh 20, which is uh, meal planning for dinner only, and she's highly successful. And so while we don't spend, you know, we don't have an hour call every month, you know, nothing like that, um, I do know that if I reach out, she does make time to help me, um, and has helped me. She was yeah. instrumental when I first launched. Uh, and I met her at a conference, super random. And um, and if you ask her why she stuck with me and helped me, it's because she said that, and she told somebody, I heard her say that, when I introduced myself to her, I didn't say I'm thinking of doing this. She's, I said, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to do it. Right. Could you please answer these three questions for me? Yeah, you're serious. And so we became friends after that. Um, so she's been instrumental. I um, I read a lot of social media stuff online. Um, I am friends with somebody called named Derek Halpern of Social yeah, Triggers. Yeah, I read his uh, his blog post about you. 
Because so, he talked about you and then your success and then the Marie Forleo program also. Yeah, so this is like four, three or four years ago, but um, we met and I just went to New York, had you know two hour coffee with him, and just kind of. Re- and I, what's really cool is that at some point you you kind of see not financially equals, but you can see that in the industry you're sort of equals, and that's really an awesome moment, you know, um, to know that you're there with the people that you've looked up to. Um, I have an MBA and I worked in the business industry. We've been business school mentors for five years at Loyola University in New Orleans. And I will tell you that business schools and MBA programs are not preparing people to run online businesses. And more so, things are not even necessary. So you have to really. Um, so I did do B School by Marie Forleo uh, really early on. And that was kind of instrumental to kind of. I would say mental positioning of what I was doing. Yeah. Um, you know, I've learned how to write copy online, things like that. So, but on a day to day basis, like I literally shoot things back and forth uh, with my husband. Yeah. Um, and my dad, my stepdad, like he's a retired, he's in the uh, PR, he was in the PR industry for years, but he's really, really good about telling me. How, whether or not my I, my great ideas are really on brand or not, right? So, um, yeah. So my dad is yeah. another one, but really industry wise, you know, that's about yeah. it. Yeah, Laura, thank you so much. This has been hugely valuable. I appreciate it. Um, so everyone that's should fun. check out mamables dot com and laurafuentes dot com. It's f u n t e s dot com. Um, last question, Laura, for yeah. you. So tell me about one of the when you're down folder messages what what sticks out to you is one of your favorites oh my gosh you know what there was one a couple of years back that um you know we a lot of parents come to me with their picky eaters and this woman thought she was being she she was very very hard on her son because he she she thought that he was a picky eater and he didn't want to try food. So they had like battles on the table. Like it wasn't really meal time wasn't bringing the best out of her. And she had read um, or you know, maybe listened to a podcast of mine where I, where I interviewed an a picky eater expert. And I shared my story about, you know, that I was one of those moms who really – not force fed my kids, but really got into it with my kids about not eating and blah, blah, blah. And then I realized that my son had a clinical issue. Mm-hmm. So it really wasn't about me. And um, when you shift that, so she was listening to the podcast and took her son to a specialist. And indeed, he had a clinical issue. They've spent six months working through it. And it wasn't the food. It was you know, something clinically wrong. And so she just, I mean, it was the nicest, longest email that and I was like you know what that's how I tell you like I, I the littlest things you make a difference and it's not making a dif- I don't need to make a difference to a million people like I made a difference in that woman's life and her yeah. son's life yeah so that's one of those really good ones yeah Laura thank you so much thank you I really appreciate it it's been awesome my pleasure thank you what I got you can't buy it resides between my eyes walk through the fire came out better on the other Like a peach if you find the sand right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand